Let's take a quick look at something from Haya Toys. This is the exquisite basic Godzilla from King of the Monsters, uh, the burning Godzilla version of him. I have been a fan of Haya Toys for a bit now. I have a lot of their um, exquisite minifigures uh, from the Aliens movies, uh, Robocop, and I love all those. So I was very curious as to see what they would do with, uh, with Godzilla. Um, and I do have the kind of bluish version of Godzilla from NECA. Uh, from King of the Monsters, and I love that, so um, I figured I would go with the Burning Godzilla from Haya Toys. And I do also have the, uh, the Godzilla from the Monster Arts, Godzilla vs. Kong, um, and that, to me, leaves a lot to be desired. I'll, I'll throw them all up here so we can see them all together. Uh, I love their Kong, but their, the Monster Arts Godzilla was, eh, it was a little weird, but anyway. So he comes in a nice, chunky box. He's heavy. And I just want to say before I get him out of the box, I'm actually kind of relieved that there's just a big put together solid Godzilla in here. I, for one, as a collector, I'm kind of getting a little, I've, I've, I've burnt out on um, extra hands and, you know, flame pieces and whatever, all these accessories that end up just filling my drawers. This is just, I'm hoping this is just one big solid well done Godzilla, Godzilla figure. That is exactly what he is. He looks pretty perfect to me. He has more than enough articulation. Um, some of these, some of these collector figures, I think, go overboard with the uh, the number of points of articulation, and it just it starts to become so segmented that it doesn't feel like a, a, a full character, a full creature. He does have um, articulated jaw and tongue. The arms are very poseable. The legs are one, two, three. Is he have an ankle thing too? Yeah, like four or five points of articulation in the legs, which is a lot for such chunky legs. Paintwork on him, I think, definitely justifies having um, this version of Godzilla in my my collection. Also, I'll say it, I loved King of the Monsters. I thought it was, I think it is my favorite uh, Monsterverse movie thus far. We'll bring in his buddies. This is the NECA version of, I guess, the, the, the basic Godzilla from King of the Monsters, who stands a little shorter. I don't know, I'm gauging. I think, I think this guy's about seven, seven and a half inches. This guy's a six inch figure, I believe. And just for the hell of it, here's the goofy uh, monster arts Godzilla. Weird. See what I mean by so many points of articulation that it starts not looking like a, a full finished, full finished uh, figure. And so I continue to be impressed with what Haya Toys is doing. And I have no reason to not keep uh, collecting their Godzilla toys. I have had this for a while, but for some reason I'm only doing a video on him now. This is a quick look at the Shogun Warriors Godzilla figure. I think from 1977. And I have this uh, not because I have any nostalgia for Shogun Warrior toys. Um, they're amazing, but they are even a little bit before my time. Uh, but I do have nostalgia for Godzilla. I have fond, fond childhood memories of finding those creature features on like Saturday mornings. As a kid, if I was scrolling through TV channels and I found a Godzilla movie, I stopped scrolling every time. So the Shogun Warrior figures are these giant, beautiful, brightly colored uh, robots, uh, all of which I think are actually taller than, than Godzilla here. They were, they were based on a, a cartoon over in Japan uh, that was never aired here. I do think there was a Shogun Warriors comic, uh, but that was later. So there were toys that just marketed themselves because they were really, really big and they had a presence. They were released by Mattel, uh, and at some point they wanted to expand the line. 
Um, they knew that kids were into Godzilla. The Godzilla movies were over here. So they contacted uh, Bandai over in Japan and had them sculpt and mold and manufacture this Godzilla figure for them and ship him on over. And I could be wrong, I'm no toy historian, but I do think this is the first toy rendition of Godzilla. And as I said, he, um, he is smaller than all the Shogun Warrior uh, figures in the line, but he's still, he's still a beast. Here he is next to my, uh, my foot-tall Godzilla figure from my childhood. So we're talking close to two feet here. I would love this figure if he just stood there, but he does have some play features. On the back of his head, there is a lever. Mine's broken off, but it's still... It still functions. There would be more of a, a protruding red lever that when you pull down, he sticks out his tongue. It's his tongue, but it also doubles as his fire breath, I guess, his atomic breath. He does have wheels on his feet, which is pretty dumb. But the other play feature, main play feature, is that his right fist, not his left, just his right one, does fire the fist with this button up here. Oh, it fires further than I thought. So yeah, Godzilla has a firing right fist. He does have pretty limited articulation, but I mean, what what more would you need? It's his shoulders move, the legs move, the tail. I don't think. Yeah, the tail doesn't move, nor does the neck. But for uh, a rendition of a Godzilla toy from nineteen from the late nineteen seventies, I don't know. This has got to be way more than any kid could have asked for. Again, I don't have a lot of nostalgia for Shogun Warriors. I used to have a couple of them, but sold them. But I am not parting with uh, this Godzilla because I love the character. And uh, as far as this particular toy goes, in the, uh, in the words of Dr. Jones, he belongs in a museum. My basement will have to do.